Guy Lafleur will miss the next three to four weeks with a fractured cheekbone. It happened last night in Quebec's loss to the Buffalo Sabres. Ex-Ranger Dean Kennedy slams Lafleur into the boards. Guy hits his head hard on the glass, also sustaining a cut above the left eye. Doctors will decide Friday whether surgery is needed. At the Garden tonight, Bernie Nichols makes his debut in front of the home fans as the Rangers host the St. Louis Blues. You will see it live right here on MSG. Let's join Bruce Beck now for tonight's edition of Rangers Game Night. On game night, it's the Madison Square Garden debut of the Rangers' Bernie Nichols, who said goodbye to Los Angeles in style on Saturday night. We'll check in on John Van Beesbrook, the club's long-lost goaltender, who returns to the Nets after a three-week absence. Number 66, Mario Lemieux, keeps his scoring streak alive. We'll take a look back at last night's action in Pittsburgh and update the numbers. And the St. Louis Blues human goal scoring machine, Brett Hall, invades the garden, wielding a blazing blade. Hello again, everyone. I'm Bruce Beck. Welcome back to Rangers Hockey on Madison Square Garden Network. Tonight, it's the season finale between the Rangers and the St. Louis Blues. The Blues looking for their first sweep since the 1980-81 season. But the Rangers prefer to focus on the recent prosperity, a record of 4-1-2 and two, two in their last seven games, and victories on the road against Edmonton and Los Angeles. And the big story for the Rangers and their fans, the acquisition of Bernie Nichols. Tonight, all eyes will be upon the Rangers' centerman, who makes his debut at Madison Square Garden wearing a New York sweater. Nichols was nervous in Edmonton in his first game as a Ranger, openly emotional in his return visit to Los Angeles. And tonight, just 10 minutes ago, his heart was pounding again as he took the short walk from the locker room to the ice. Amidst a warm reception from the Garden crowd. You know, it's not every day a city gets to embrace a 70-goal scorer, and we'll chart Nichols' play religiously throughout the game. Well, there's another story tonight, because tonight, the Beezer returns to the Nets. John Van Beesbrook will make his first start since January the 8th, his first appearance since January the 4th. In the interim, he's been replaced by Mike Richter as the team's number one goaltender. Now, earlier today, we talked to John Van Beesbrook, and what he wanted to talk about most was recapturing respect tonight. Well, when you sit on the bench for a long period of time and, uh, you know, at the point you go out as the number one goaltender, um, you lose a lot of respect, not only from uh, your teammates, but from the players around the league. So maybe they might think, hey, we can get a couple cheapies on Van Beesbrook tonight. So uh, that's the part that you really have to work through and in, in gain the respect back of not only your players, but uh, the rest of the league. There are many stories tonight. Brett Hall, the number one goal scorer in the league, Bernie Nichols' home debut, and John Van Beesbrook returning to the Nets. For more on tonight's game and a look at Nichols and Van Beesbrook, Sam Rosen and John Davidson. Thanks, Bruce, and good evening, everyone. And, John, an interesting move by Roger Nielsen, taking a chance as he goes back to John Van Beesbrook, who hasn't played in quite a while. 27 days since he last played, Sam, or since he last started a game. And it's a situation where John Van Beesbrook, who has had a history of playing very well on home ice, gets an opportunity to prove that he can still be, be and stay a New York Ranger. It's a situation where the, the Rangers are not looking ahead. They have not made any type of decision as to who will play goal in their next game, which is Saturday in Boston. All they want is a good performance out of Van Beesbrook. Yesterday at practice, Van Beesbrook had one net to himself, so he got lots of work, and he says he's ready. He's been working a lot, by the way, on basics during the last few practices. But certainly with Mike Richter having played so well, a lot of pressure on John Van Beesbrook tonight, but some of that pressure could be deflected with Bernie Nichols' arrival. It should be very interesting. Bernie Nichols has played three previous games for the Rangers, but all on the road. He has played well. And in watching the Rangers practice yesterday, he really has made their power play come alive. They're, the players are even enjoying it more in practice, having success, having Bray Nichols playing the point, or else playing up as a forward, jumping around on the power play. He's a good playmaker and a good scorer. One thing I would like to see, though, is for his wingers 
to have a little more success at even strength and scoring, especially John O'Gradnik. We'll watch Bernie Nichols debut as a New York Ranger at Madison Square Garden, and we'll watch the return of John Van Beesbrook in nets for the Rangers. Now for news around the NHL, let's go back to Bruce. Thank you, Sam, and the NHL News is brought to you by GE. From satellites to medical systems, we bring good things to life. The streak lives in Pittsburgh. Mario Lemieux continues his assault on Wayne Gretzky and the record books. Last night against Philadelphia, Lemieux gathered three assists and extended his point scoring streak to 40, the second longest in NHL history behind Wayne Gretzky's amazing 51-game mark. But even Lemieux's heroics couldn't save the Penguins from a loss last night against the Flyers at the Civic Arena. After Lemieux got an assist early on Tony Tonti's goal, Rick Tockett put the Flyers ahead 3-2 on this beautiful move, Tockett's 27th of the year. Big Tim Kerr returning to form. Here he takes a fine feed from Terry Karkner, scores one of two goals he had on the night. The Flyers win it by a score of 6-3. And Nassau Coliseum, Jeff Brown put the Blues ahead of the Islanders, 1-0 in the first, and set the tone for this hockey game as he beats Glenn Healy. Red Hall picked up the game winner, a one-timer from the slot. The Blues won it by a score of 2-1 behind rookie goalie Curtis Joseph, who stopped 24 shots for his first NHL win. And in Los Angeles last night, the Kings beat the Devils 5-2 behind the play of Tomas Sandstrom. Sandstrom, the former Ranger, scored two goals in this hockey game, his first two goals as a member of the Kings, and he said playing on Gretzky's line is beginning to settle in. Sandstrom's goal was a beauty, a slap shot with Gretzky trailing the play. And the fans rewarded the new King with a worthy applause. Tomas Sandstrom looking good last night in Los Angeles. Following a vote by the Players Association, NHL salaries were made public this week for the first time ever. Among the 21 NHL teams, the Los Angeles Kings had the highest salary, the St. Louis Blues the lowest salary. As far as individual players are concerned, Really no surprise when you look at number one and number two, Wayne Gretzky and Mario Lemieux. Mark Messier recently voted by the players as the NHL's best all-around talent. He's at one million per year. Dave Taylor, Steve Eiserman, and Bernie Nichols follow. As for the Rangers, newly acquired Bernie Nichols tops the Rangers' individual salary list. John O'Grodnick completing his option year is second. Veteran Ron Greshner is third. The bottom three for the Rangers, Paul Broughton, Troy Millette, and Milo Horsheva. Additional monies for Horsheva are paid to the Czech Federation. Now, there are several reasons why these salaries are misleading. Number one, we don't know what players got as a signing bonus. Number two, we don't have information on performance clauses, and in some cases, players could receive half of their overall salary, an additional half in bonus structure. And number three, when deferred compensation is considered, we don't know the length of time, whether it's one year or five years, and we don't know if it includes interest or not. We'll take a short break, and Big J.D. will join me for a scouting report of tonight's game between the Rangers and the Blues. Stay with us. J.D. is back from that long road trip, <laughs> no worse for wear. But, John, you have thoughts that perhaps a new league, a new hockey league is on the horizon. Well, Bruce, there's lots of talks going on between some people to do with starting up a new league. Uh, there's been talks of it perhaps being called a global league. They're thinking about six different teams, and there will be meetings coming up a, around the 8th or 10th of February, possibly in Los Angeles, to try and solidify their position. And there's genuine interest. There's people out there with a lot of money that are very involved in starting a new league. Whether or not it goes, I don't know. There's even been talks about Brett Hull, perhaps, if he doesn't sign his new deal in St. Louis, as being one of the first players to go in that direction. Yes, indeed. J.D. did have a phone on every road trip <laughs> and uh, in every room along the way. Right now, let's focus on the keys to tonight's hockey game between the Rangers and the Blues. And the keys of the game brought to you by Key Ford, the only Ford dealer on Westchester Avenue. Key Ford in White Plains. Well, J.D., let's start with Brett Hull. Well, Brett Hull, of course, is the number one goal scorer in the entire National Hockey League and is the only pure goal scorer the Blues have. The Rangers will do their best to try and stop him. Most likely, it'll be a Jan Eriksson shadow job once again. Against a team like St. Louis, does New York have to have patience? Well, I think so. The Blues usually play, if things go their way, a low-scoring game. It's difficult to get a wide-open game going against the Blues. The Rangers, too, do not like wide-open games. They play kind of a... 
a blue collar type of defense. They finish their checks well. And if you try to get impatient and try and rush things, you will open up your defense and allow the Blues to get the good scoring chances. The Rangers have to remain patient. Blue collar hockey means four checking, my friend. Well, when you talk about four checking with the Blues, Bruce, they're a team that when, when the Rangers try to come out of their zone with a puck, the Blues always have a man back. In other words, they're two defensemen and a third forward. So you don't get many three on twos and two on ones. So what you have to do is try and forecheck the Blues defense and create turnovers in their zone, in the other team's zone, and maybe generate offense from that area. And J.D. asked Roger Nielsen about the importance of forechecking against the defensive-minded Blues. You're right, John. They don't give you much on the rush. Usually they're left winger. It's the guy that hangs back, and they, they go with kind of a two-man forecheck, and they're, and they're pretty safe. And what they're hoping is that you'll make a mistake in the neutral zone, and they got some pretty good shooters. But uh, their defense is, is not quick, but they, they move the puck fairly quickly. They, almost anybody seems to be able to move in and play defense for them. But, yeah, we're going to try to, to forecheck more. We had good starts on a road trip in two or three places, uh, and we're going to try to get that quick start tonight. The leading goal scorer in the entire league is Brett Hull. Last night he had seven shots on goal against the Islanders and the game-winning goal. What are your special plans for him in this game? Rianne well, Erickson's going to draw the assignment of uh, trying to keep, uh, keep track of him. He's, he's difficult both on the rush, where last night against the Islanders he didn't seem to have much trouble with their defense. And uh, uh, then he's also difficult in the zone because he gets such good position. And, and then we'll have to be up the defenseman there to, to pick him up. But uh, when he's going, he's a, he's a tough man to check. And uh, so Yanni will have his hands full tonight, I'm sure. John, what did he mean, left winger hanging back? You know what that goes back to, Bruce? When I first saw it, the, the Czechoslovakia national team, when they play the game, they like to have their left winger always stay back towards the, the blue line and have their two other forwards move in to do the forechecking. Calgary adopted the same style when Bob Johnson was coaching with that club. And you think about their left wingers in those days, but Plinsky and Patterson and those types of players, all good defensive players, and the scoring on the right side. You think of the Blues, their scoring's on the right side. Brett Hull, uh, McLean, the, the, the scorer is up front on the right side, so the left wingers are told to stay back and be that defensive valve. It's an interesting way of doing things, and I think it suits their system because of where their scorers are, but it becomes predictable too uh, after a while. Now, JD, what about the fact that the Blues lead this season series two to zip? Are the Rangers players more motivated? Are they aware of that? And is it a factor tonight? Well, I think they're certainly aware of it. In both games, the Blues scored the, the first goal to start those games. And in recent games, the Rangers, over their last seven games, have lost one. And the only one they lost was where Calgary scored the first goal of the game in Calgary. Every other game, the Rangers scored the first goal. I think that means a lot. And when you get two, two teams that are very strong defensively, and the Blues and the Rangers, getting the lead is important. So the other team, if they open up, it causes problems for them defensively. The Blues are one of the best teams in the NHL at getting the lead, and over recent games, they've had that one nothing lead almost every time out. Coming up next, bye-bye Bernie. A look at a goodbye in Los Angeles. Patrick moving in around Sorella, save. Rebound, score! John O'Grundick, it's a power play goal! Welcome back to game night. While Rangers fans say hello, Los Angeles fans say goodbye to Bernie Nichols. The 28-year-old centerman built quite a legacy in Los Angeles, and broadcaster Bob Miller shares with us this fond farewell piece. Bernie Nichols spent nine years with the Kings. From his first game back in 1981 until his trade last week, Bernie was one of the most exciting players in the league. But no matter how many goals he scored or how many times he celebrated with the famous pumpernickel, Bernie always played in the shadows. For six years, it was the shadow of Marcel Dion, one of the true superstars of the NHL. Then when Dion was traded, rookie Jimmy Carson captured all the attention as one of the top young players in the league. The Kings traded Carson in 1988, but that trade brought in Wayne Gretzky, the greatest player in the history of the game. So no matter how well he did, Bernie Nichols was always the second center on the Kings. Now in the Big Apple, he'll finally have a chance to shine on his own. But LA fans will always remember the excitement he brought to the Kings.
Bastian left of the net over to Nichols. He shoots and he scores. To Nichols. He shoots. He scores. Here's Nichols. Gangs right wing. He shoots. He scores. Oh, what a drive by Bernie Nichols from the right wing. Gretzky in front to Nichols. He scores. Bernie hopes for many pumpernickels starting tonight at Madison Square Garden. Well, a different twist tonight in our segment entitled A View from the Crease. Instead of the physical aspect, John Van Beesbrook talks about his mental approach to tonight's game, his first start in over three weeks. A View from the Crease is brought to you by your local New York, New Jersey, Connecticut Volvo dealers. Volvo, a car you can believe in. I think, first of all, uh, I'm going to try to get the first shot and get right into the game and, and uh, get that feeling of uh, comfort back, and, and hopefully uh, everything will take place. I have to, uh, you know, get the rusty parts of my game back out. I'm, I've been working on the basic parts of my game, and now I have to uh, just go out there and, and make sure that I don't beat myself. There's a lot of other things involved, too, but I think that uh, right now the team's going in a good situation. And I've learned that uh, I haven't really made a mistake in a month, which makes me feel good. <laughs> and here comes Bernie Nichols. This taped earlier. Nichols making his first appearance as a Ranger during pregame warm-ups back about 10 minutes to 7 here at Madison Square Garden. Tonight's the debut, the home debut of hired gun Bernie Nichols, acquired from the Los Angeles Kings in a trade last week involving Tomas Sandstrom and Tony Granato. And just earlier tonight, Nichols receiving a nice warm ovation from the fans that were here early at Madison Square Garden. And during the first intermission tonight, we'll talk to Bernie Nichols about the trades and about his expectations here in New York. That's during the first break. And during the second break, we'll chat with St. Louis winger Paul McClain, who has 19 goals this year, a nine-year veteran. He provides valuable leadership for the Blues. NHL tonight, big game for Ranger fans to keep their eye on Washington at Minnesota. Well, that's it for game night. Coming up next, a sports desk update with the bullet Bob Page, and then it's the Rangers and the Blues. Welcome back to the MSG Sports Desk, everybody. If you haven't heard yet, that Knicks last second victory over Chicago back on January 15th will stand. NBA Commissioner David Stern today disallowed the protest of the Chicago Bulls, claiming that Trent Tucker's miracle shot that went in was actually due to an official's making a judgment decision albeit an incorrect one. Knicks play at Boston tonight. They've lost 22 in a row there. We'll have that game for you over our MSG2 service beginning at 8 p.m. Guy Lafleur is out for three to four weeks with a uh, fractured cheekbone. Lafleur, who of course does not wear a helmet, was belted into the glass last night by another ex-ranger, Buffalo's Dean Kennedy. Michelle Bergeron, rightly furious over the incident, then sent goon Darren Kimball out to retaliate against Sabres star Rick Vive. The result, that cheap shot punch, Vive not injured seriously. Now we invite you to stay tuned for New York Rangers hockey here on MSG.